Good morning. Good morning. Okay, well, a couple things. Thank you, Lord, for the beautiful colors we are experiencing, particularly this past week. I don't know about you, but they are just gorgeous. Now, in between me ch my chattering my teeth, let me um, bring you up to date. Um, <laughs> Whenever, I don't know about other liturgists, but whenever I sit up here, it always seems to be warm. I don't know how he manages with that robe, but boy, I wish I had one today. Um, <laughs> and what a day to not have the prayer shawls and lap blankets, because I'm telling you, I'd be passing them out. <laughs> um, seriously, um, it is a little chilly, and we're not quite sure why. Um, Newell Heating was called, and they were supposed to have fixed whatever needed to be fixed on Wednesday and we're not quite sure what happened with that. But we will prevail, and we will find out what happened with that, and we will get through today. And like I said, if you see me inching closer to him, it's only because I want his robe. <laughs> OK, on a more serious note, um, some announcements for this morning. Um, you may have seen the barrel for the, uh, the deacons are collecting the non-perishable food items. Uh, started last week and goes through December 18th. Um, there's a list of um, items that are suggested for donations in your bulletin. Our mission outreach committee, together with the uh, teachers of the Trinity Learning Center, are doing a trunk or treat again this year on Halloween on October 31st. Um, it's fun. It's fun to see all the little ones, and it's not hard. If you have a couple hours that, that late morning, at early afternoon, we can show you how to, to decorate a trunk, um, a lift gate, the SUVs are welcome, um, and uh, we'd love to have more of you. If you feel like you're not up to that, some donations of individually wrapped little toys, candy, cookies, something like that are, are welcome as well to pass out. Um, we're going to have more information forthcoming on um, the committee Samaritan's Purse operation which is collecting shoe boxes. I will be um, putting a list up of um, items, um, of suggested items for the shoe box. Um, and uh, as I said, there'll be more information forthcoming on that. Trinity Men's Club meets on November 12th at Lums. Um, and also there's a session meeting tomorrow evening at six o'clock here. Our mission outreach meeting is pushed to the following week. We will not be meeting because of the conflict with sessions, so mission outreach will be the following Monday. Women of Trinity have um, their lunch meeting on October 21st at 12.30 here. It's a brown bag lunch. We're gonna look to clean some closets, yippee. Um, rise Against Hunger, um, and you've seen all the devastation, particularly in, in our South with what's been happening um, and uh, there are a lot of hungry people, and we think that, oh, it's only, you know, the African children that are hungry. It's not just them. It's people far and wide, near and far, and we're going to be packing um, meals with the Rise Against Hunger uh, program on November 12th. The, um, we're looking for five individuals to help set up. At 9.30 that morning, there'll be a sign-up. And then the rest of the volunteers come at 10.30. I'm told if we have enough people, we can be out of here by 1.30. So get your friends, get your relatives, pay your waitresses, I don't care. Get the hook, bring them in, and help us pack, pack these meals. Um, the Stewardship Committee is having um, their luncheon on November 20th. Mark that down. And uh, there's also other opportunities uh, for you to serve there with um, being liturgist, Meals on Wheels, the flower chart, um, those are in your bulletin. With that, I think that we will look to Pam for what I am sure to be a great prelude. Thank you.
How lovely it is to have the organ again. Thank you, Pam. It's wonderful. Please join me responsively for our call to worship. Lord God, your eyes are open day and night watching your children, and your ears are always ready to listen to their prayers. And for this, we come, come here, here today to worship, worship you. So on this day, Father, allow us to see you with eyes of faith and to hear with understanding what you are saying to us. Awaken, Awaken in us a longing to do what is right and, and make us aware of the company of faithful witnesses, past, present, and to come, with whom we join to worship you this day. Amen. Please listen to the call to confession. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. We claim to have fellowship with him, yet we walk in darkness. We lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Therefore, let us confess our sins before him on this day. Here now, I'm sorry, please join me in the prayer of confession. God, our Lord, Father, Father, we have done, done wrong and do, and do not, not deserve to be called your children. children. We, we have turned, turned from your way and have been taken in by our own, own desires. We, we have not loved neighbors as you have commanded. Have, have mercy on us, Lord. Lord. Have, have mercy on us and forgive us for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A time of silence will be observed for your own personal confession. My dear friends, who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ, and Christ died for us, rose for us, and Christ prays for us. Know this day that you are forgiven, and be at peace. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. Well, likewise, I take this moment in God's time to bid each and every one of you a cordial and warm welcome as we draw together in God's house of worship on this Sabbath day. And uh, again, I want to thank Barbara for her kind assistance this morning along with Pam. Um, it's good to have your company up here. I feel so much more secure with you at either side of me. Barbara touched on, touched on something that perhaps uh, you, you may be aware of. Uh, if you know anything about European history, you probably are aware of the fact that very, very few of the churches in Europe have central heating. When you go into a church at just about any time, any hour of the year, because of the thickness of the stone construction, you will note right away that the sanctuaries are a tad on the cool side, which is the reason why pastors and clergy and professors throughout history 
in Europe have always worn robes. It keeps them warm. So uh, just a word to the wise. If you, want, if you decide to wear a robe to church some Sunday morning, not to worry, won't bother me. Uh, it's just part of the tradition in Europe. They have no central heating in their sanctuaries. We're pretty lucky. Be that as it may, I would like to invite uh, my young friends way in the back to come forward at this time so that we can spend a few moments together. Come on up, guys. I see you back there. two of them. To infinity and beyond, some people are worth melting for. Here's another one. Are you ready? Just keep swimming. That's it. Dory. Who was Dory? Just keep swimming. Nemo. You knew that one. All right. One out of three isn't bad. Here we go. Me want cookies. Santa Claus. <laughs> me want cookie. Even I know that one. <laughs> me want cookie. <laughs> cookie monster. Oh. All right. For everybody here. Here's. <laughs> In every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. Every job that must be done, there is an element of fun. Perhaps you don't know this one. I bet 
Barber does. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Pam had Mary a Poppins. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, we're, it's a stretch. We're going back in time just a little bit. Mary Poppins. Voice recognition. Okay. Well, here's the first one. Who's this one again? Buzz Lightyear. Who got that one? You got it. Here's the second one. Our melter. Who's our melter? Olaf. Did you get this one? No. Okay. You got the third one. Who's this one? Scarlet. The women are taking over the world. Okay. There we go. Now you know this one. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. All right, good. And one that our friend Barbara knows. Well, I'll, I'll defer to the children. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins. Okay, we'll give you that one too, Julie. And here's one that everybody should know. You should love as I have loved you. Love everyone as I have loved you. Oh, this is tough. I can tell I had my work cut out for me. <laughs> uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Love as I have loved you. And this is the one you and I are going to focus on for a little bit this morning. Okay. All right. Love is voice recognition. That's the one we don't ever want to, for, want to forget as God's children. Well, thank you both very much for your kind attention. And uh, your voice recognition, guys, is oh, pretty good. <coughs> pretty good. Why don't we have a word of prayer, okay? All right. Let's hold hands. I'm a hand holder. Here we go. Reach out. Oh, oh they touched each other. Okay, here we go. Well, Lord, we do thank you for the gift of today and the fact that you call each of us, each and every one of us by name, uh, your sons and daughters alike, always uh, forward into your kingdom, your kingdom of love and grace and truth. We pray this day that no matter where we may be or what we are doing, we will always respond to your call, your voice, uh, when you speak to us. We thank you for the gift of our children today and our congregation. Uh, despite the somewhat chilly weather, we're glad to be together because we're warm in the spirit. Thank you, dear God. I pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Voice recognition.
seated. For our scripture lesson this morning, we turn to the gospel according to John in the New Testament as God's word is revealed to us by way of the 10th chapter, beginning with verse 1. And if you will, listen carefully for the word of the Lord as the Lord speaks to you this day. Very truly, I tell you, Pharisees, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore, Jesus said again, Very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Thus ends the reading of his holy word for this morning, and I pray God will have his blessing unto it. Amen. Something that you and I are exposed to just about every day, almost 24-7 hours of the 24-7 uh, days uh, of the year, that, uh, well, I know drives you crazy and it drives me crazy. It's called the Internet. But if you will, for just a few moments, think of the many ways that you and I use the Internet today. Whether it's a home computer, a laptop, a smartphone, or a tablet, interestingly many of us use the internet to do all kinds of things, to check our email, check our text messages, order things online, check our credit card balance, ugh, pay bills, request a book from the library, and on and on and on. But the one screen I seldom like to see, and I imagine you feel the same way about this, is the one that says, please enter your username and password. Oh. If I don't visit that site very often, I, I find myself groaning and asking myself, now oh, let me think, oh, what is my password? I know it. What is my password? And if you're like me, you probably tend to have only, well, you know how this works, just a couple of passwords that you use for all of your various websites. Shh. Don't tell anybody. But which password is this one? Well, let me think. Is it six or eight letters long? Is anything capitalized? And where's that scrap piece of paper on which I wrote down all of my passwords? I can't seem to find it. Where did I put it? It's usually right here slipped underneath my computer where I can easily find it. 
Have you ever had a conversation like this with yourself when it comes to your computer? <sighs> well, when do you know it? It seems that every week, coupled with all of this, another internet virus shows its ugly face. And when another internet virus comes down the pike, most, if not all of us, are having to, find, having to change our passwords. And what a pain it is. Interestingly, lots of tech companies have been thinking about this same thing, and one of the solutions they are exploring involves something called biometrics. Have you ever heard of it? Biometrics. Biometrics uses some aspect of our physiology as our password, like our thumbprint or our fingerprints, perhaps a scan of our retina. Karen and I just had this experience at the JFK airport coming back into the good old United States this past week. It looked directly into her eyeball and said, welcome to the United States. But I should mention at the same time, Karen was not granted access because it didn't recognize her retina. Oh, good thing I don't have to go back and pick her up. Biometrics, using our fingerprints, our retinas, or more commonly, get this, our voice. Our voice. When you think about this, voice, voice recognition software is becoming quite advanced these days. As a matter of fact, some computer companies are exploring uh, how to use a, a verbal password, a combination of some kind of a set phrase spoken by you that unlocks your computer. But now, you still have to remember the phrase and to pray that as you're speaking to your computer, you don't get laryngitis. But it appears to be a better system than the one that we currently use. Voice recognition. Interestingly, this version of computer biometrics is actually built around something that is very, very old. Why do I say this? Well, think about it. You and I have long known that animals, animals recognize one another by their voices. For example, calves. We've all seen calves in the, in the local uh, area surrounding Dallas. Calves and huge herds of cattle can find their mother by hearing their mother's plaintive Moo. And what about sheep? Sheep and goats can locate their wandering babies despite hearing a cacophony of bleats and baas. And again, this concept is so well known that Jesus himself referred to it when he tried to explain the special relationship between God and us. What was it that Jesus said in John's gospel this morning? The sheep know the shepherd's voice. The one who calls them by name, he knows them. And they will follow him to safety and the more abundant life. It's fascinating, isn't it? The sheep will will know his voice when he calls. It was a familiar figure of speech several thousand years ago, following God's covenant, following his establishment of the covenant with the ancient Jewish people. The Jewish people knew the scriptures quite well, such as, one that you and I still hear even today, the 23rd Psalm. In the 23rd Psalm, the scripture says what? 
The Lord is my shepherd. How about that? The Lord is my shepherd. Moreover, the ancient Jews knew the warnings in uh, the Old Testament book of Ezekiel, chapter 24, or excuse me, 34, in which bad shepherds were those faith leaders who only looked after their own needs and neglected their flock. And so their bad example caused the sheep to do what? It caused the sheep to begin to wonder and to fall prey to all the dangers of the world. It was the good shepherds whose voice who could be trusted and who led the sheep to a good pasture and safe lodging. Let's go back to biometrics for a moment. I find it interesting to note that for, bio, for biometrics to work, your computer has to be programmed to recognize your voice, right? You have to say your password several times to the computer so that it can identify your unique verbal voice print, correct? Interestingly, the good news of the gospel reminds us that we are each programmed to know God's voice. In other words, there is a built-in capacity for each of us to respond to the ways of the Spirit. That's with a capital S. Faith it seems, is not a totally alien concept. It is not a foreign idea that has no connection to who we fundamentally are. Nope. All of us, all people, I venture to say, have the capacity to be in a relationship with God and to hear Christ's voice. Several decades ago, there was a theologian whose name you might recognize from your own readings, a French theologian by the name of Teilhard de Chardin. And at one point in his career, he came up with a quote that I often think about and refer to, and it goes like this. He said, we are primarily spiritual beings having a human experience, not human beings having a spiritual experience. Think about that for a moment. It's profound. We are primarily spiritual beings having a human experience not human beings having a spirit, not human beings having a spiritual experience. The reason I find this so fascinating is because for all of our fixation on biology, I think we need to remember that we are body and soul. Body and soul. So that we are programmed to recognize the voice of our loving God and of Christ the Good Shepherd when he calls us. We're programmed to hear his voice. Fascinating. You and I know in the 21st century, particularly every night when we turn on the 6 o'clock news, how this goes, where's the emphasis? Where's the emphasis when you when you all those commercials come up? Advertising all the drugs that will make our bodies well. You know, for colds and flu and everything else that you can probably think of. By the time you get through the evening news, you've already heard 25 commercials that have to do with what? The body, but not the soul. Now, why is all of this so important to contemplate or to remember 
Well, if you will, think again about computer biometrics. Interestingly, no matter what type of fancy technology we devise to protect our computer information, someone, someone out there will try to find a way to defeat it, right? In this world, there is light and darkness, good and evil. Innocent computer screens that require our credit card information and diabolical imitation screens that exist to steal that information. Have any of you lost your identity lately over the computer? You know how this goes. I think we need to remember that at the very essence, at the very core of our being, we are programmed to recognize the voice of a loving Lord who calls you and me by name. Who knows us and goes to great lengths, even to the cross on Good Friday, to heal our brokenness and lead us into the life eternal. Because let's face it, <laughs> there are thieves and bandits out there all around us and sometimes within us who seek to lead us astray or into danger. And this is why I would suggest to you we always pray in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, O Lord, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. It seems to me that if you and I have the innate spiritual capacity to trust something deeper, deeper than reason and our very imperfect human logic. It is because all of us need to trust something, to trust someone deeper, much deeper than reason and logic. We are the sheep, whether we recognize it or not, who need a shepherd. Jesus, I believe, touched on something profound, which I think merits our daily reflection. Believe it or not, you and I are made to hear Christ's voice because we need that voice to guide us amidst the cacophony of noise and distraction of the moral bandits who surround us every single day, almost 24-7, every single day. That is why we gather in church on Sunday morning, I think, so that we can take some time to sit and to contemplate to worship and serve amidst other people who have very little in common with us except this very real shared need to hear Christ's voice. That is why. That is why we invite others to join us in church on Sunday morning. Because we all share this need and we'll only find what we most deeply seek in life when we gather into community around the Good Shepherd. The bandits and thieves that Jesus mentions in the passage this morning surround us. You may recall just last Sunday I mentioned to you how our host during our trip in Europe, our host 
who was forever preaching, hang on to your purse, hang on to your wallet, know where everything is, was the one person who lost it on a shuttle. Just that fast. He lost his wallet, he lost his credit cards, he lost his cash, and he lost his passport, all within a matter of 30 seconds. Jesus knew what he was talking about. We are surrounded. All of which is to say, my dear friends, that you and I, somehow, some way, during the course of each and every day, must step back, Take some time, take a deep breath, and allow space for the Lord to enter into your life. We must remember that each and every day, Christ is calling us by name. And that we are programmed to hear that voice, which I simply call voice recognition a biometric that is literally built into us as an expression of God's eternal grace and mercy. It seems to me that when you and I truly leave room for God and listen and follow the Lord, we then come to understand what reality truly is. And in that humble, faithful understanding, together with one another in Christ Jesus, we will have life and have it more abundantly. Because Jesus is the highest form of reality that you and I will ever know. Listen to his voice. Follow him. You'll never go wrong. Amen. Dear friends, if you will, join with me as together we turn now to uh, selection number 339 as we stand together to sing, Be Thou My Vision. you may be seated it is that time already dear friends when together we gladly willingly and joyfully uh, render that which rightfully belongs to God to begin with our many gifts and offerings and as always I encourage you who perhaps are watching or listening to us at home uh, to do the same it takes all of us as a community of faith uh, to ensure the bright future of Trinity Presbyterian Church.
sons and daughters alike respond to your call, to your voice, as we recognize you as the good shepherd. Oh, Lord, thank you for the greatest gift of all, the gift of life and the life more abundant as promised through your one and only Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Through him, bless us, bless these offerings that I bring unto you today. Bless us ever so richly, we pray in his name. Thank you. you. may be seated. As we come to our prayer time this morning, I have several names before me that I'll, I will share with you. Uh, but first, I would like to ask if you have any prayer concerns or joys that you would like to share. Is anybody celebrating a birthday or anniversary? You are Art. It's your birthday. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Art. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Any others? Karen. I want to thank you all for praying for our son-in-law. He was talking with me yesterday, and the doctor was very hopeful that he would be able to go on and do the very normal life, and he did thank you again. He probably will not even have to be by for October. Thank you. Any others? Oh, Pam. Helen Heller, who is a little three-year-old girl. Yeah. Who's, she's been in Geisinger Danville for the past week and a half. Okay. Her lung has collapsed, and they they can't seem, they've inserted a feeding tube in her, and they can't seem to make her better. Okay, and her name again? Talon Heller. Talon Heller, mm -hmm. thank you. And it's no secret, of course, um, looking at the, the greater world that things are unsettled, uh, of course, between uh, Soviet Russia and Ukraine, the NATO nations. Uh, this is one of those things that can easily slip into something much worse. Please pray for the Ukrainians uh, who have been literally chased out of their homes, who have lost family members, there are young men who are in their late teens, early 20s, who are standing up for the defense of what they consider to be their nation. This is a very difficult period of time that we're moving into. The same with um, China and North Korea. It is very, very serious. And I would not take any of it lightly. Um, sadly, it's... There are thieves and bandits out there all over the place, and uh, we want to pray for the Prince of Peace to be among us going forward. Let us go to the good Lord. Well, Lord, you've heard our voices reaching up to, to you through your Son, Jesus Christ, the one who calls us each and every day to be a part of his pasture, a part of his kingdom, indeed a part of your kingdom. We harbor in our hearts and minds very many thoughts and prayers, concerns, joys regarding events and activities over the course of um, recent days and weeks. Sometimes, dear Lord, it's hard to, sor to sort all of these thoughts out. But we know that you hear each and every one of our prayers, each and every one of our concerns and joys that we bring to you. Particularly today, we uh, offer prayers on behalf of Talon Heller, whom we understand is um, in a very serious way. We pray for your healing touch to abide. 
We also continue to pray for a friend of uh, our Presbyterian Church, uh, Millie Ryzak, who is anticipating upcoming hip surgery this week. Our son-in-law, Nick Yatsko, convalescing at home from a recent heart attack. And more recently, a friend of our family physician, uh, rather a daughter, the daughter of our family physician, Allison Macon, again, who is suffering with uh, cancer and will be experiencing forthcoming surgery in the weeks ahead. We offer special prayers for Allison this day. And as your servant Art mentioned moments ago, so many of our police force all across the face of this nation have been faced with the reality of being shot or killed. And again, we ask why, dear God, why is this happening in our great nation today? Be with these men and women who willingly offer their service, their lives, their skills toward the protection of their communities, their states, and the nation. Help us to sort through this um, difficult time to come to some sense regarding the way we should go forward, hopefully hand in hand with you and mine. And lastly, and certainly not least, uh, the world these days seems to be so shaky so unsteady. We pray for the people of the Ukraine, the many young women and men who are being called to service against their will. We pray for them. We think of all the events that are happening. They're hard to absorb, hard to understand. We pray to you, the Prince of Peace, to be looking over your earth this bl beautiful blue and green marble floating in the infinity of time and space that you created. Bless us, O oh Lord. Keep us safe. Protect us. Help all of us to respond to your voice, the voice with which you call us and have taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, dear friends, as you and I prepare to go our separate ways this day, I simply say unto you, May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace this day. Amen. And God bless.